Holy schmamolies, we have some problems at Tesla, and today I'm going to explain what is next for Tesla stock. Let's analyze that, but first, this Friday, we've extended the coupon code link down below for all my trade alerts, so when you wanna get a notification for when I sell Tesla or when I rebuy Tesla, make sure you're in the Stocks and Psychology of Money group. You get all my buy sell alerts, whether it's in my portfolio that I'm trading or just day trading or whatever it is, any kind of move we make in the stock market, you get alerts, lifetime access to that, along with our lifetime access to our course member live streams. This morning, we had over 800 folks at that moment, usually we have thousands of people who watch the live stream, but we had over 800 folks uh, live in our private course member live stream this morning, uh, asking questions, reviewing fundamentals and uh, investment theses. So if you wanna be part of those, make sure you join those and get lifetime access when you pay once. Okay, folks, let's talk Tesla, what's next? Well, first of all, Tesla's actually only down 5.5% on a disastrous delivery miss. We are down 13.9% from Wall Street's expectations. Troy was off by 5.4%. He's usually off by 3%. And basically, he wasn't negative enough. We only delivered 89% of the cars we produced. And Tesla's pointing the finger at the Red Sea and the Highland refresh. Though, and the Giga Berlin shutdown because of the terrorist attack. Uh, well, the environmental terrorism is what it's called. All of those items affect production, but keep in mind, production was actually positive uh, year over year. We're at 433,000 vehicles, so we produced enough, we just didn't deliver enough. Now, some people are going to point the finger at that and go, ah, well, you know, they're stuck in transit. Okay, well, we're also getting record high inventories on both the Model Y uh, and the Model 3. So we're not doing great in terms of demand right now. Now, could that be transitory? Well, that's what we're going to analyze uh, in this video. But uh, keep in mind, the entire EV sector is facing some pain right now. It's not just Tesla, right? It's NEO, it's Lucid, it's Rivian, although Rivian did beat on low estimates this morning. They did beat. Uh, it's, uh, you know, X-Ping, it's BYD. BYD is down 44% quarter over quarter. So the entire EV sector is going through a phase of adjustment, of pain. During COVID, everybody wanted an electric vehicle. Now, less so. And uh, we are starting in the market to have to come to the reality that maybe not everybody wants an electric vehicle. Tesla's long-term goals of getting to 10 to 20 million vehicles produced and sold are predicated on people wanting an electric vehicle. Well, if people don't want an electric vehicle, maybe they end up buying a, you know, a GM or Ford, which I know uh, most Tesla people are like, ew, grow well, why, ew. But people will. You know, GM, and I, I'm not a shill for Chevy Cruze at all. I think it's, you know, mostly kind of lame. You know, only works on highways and you gotta keep your eyes on the road or whatever. But it's interesting. You are seeing them purposely try to stab Tesla. How? Just saw an ad from them. Chevy Cruze while towing. You can't tow and use FSD on a Tesla. So I, again, I'm not saying I prefer their system over FSD. FSD is amazing compared to the trash of these other companies. <laughs> I want to be very clear and biased on that, okay? I'm very biased towards Tesla FSD. It's very good. Is it as perfect as people say on, you know, Twitter with their video clips or what? No. You know, I may be 100 miles in on 1233, and I'm, I'm, I'm still getting moments where I'm like, really? <laughs> it shouldn't be doing this. Uh, so... It's not there yet. Okay, we already know that. We already know that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, when's Wall Street gonna price in FSD? How about when it actually starts producing revenues? Oh, well now they're giving free trials to everyone. Great, so you're definitely not going to produce revenues for the next 60-ish days on FSD. <laughs> you're actually hurting revenues right now, which who knows, maybe that's the perfect buy the dip opportunity. But the point is, Wall Street has to come to the reality that this is the email from Martin right here. We have this posted over at ehack.com. I want you not to just look at the uh, median and average delivery figures, but I want you to look at the median and average delivery figures for 2028. By 2028, we're really only knocking on the door of about 4 million vehicles. That's low. You know, by 2028, we were thinking that we'd be closer to, well, markets a couple of years ago, we're thinking, oh yeah, we'll be at 6 mil, 7 mil, we're gonna be at 10 mil by 2030. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Now, why potentially could it be true as the market prices in the fear that the long-term trajectory of Tesla may not be as good as, as people originally thought? Well, one of the reasons could be uh, political. 
Now, I want to I want everybody to pay attention to this. This is this is very important. When I show you this, you're going to want to make sure you got your life insurance in as little as five minutes. You go to metkevin.com slash life. You sign up in as little as five minutes. You get it. It's easy. You got it. You tell your spouse. You tell your father, your son, your family. I finally got it. Term life. It's great. It's what Lauren and I use. It's great. Metkevin.com slash life. Uh, you'll see that link down below right next to the link for Weeble, which is where I trade. I do all my trading on here. So metkevin.com slash Weeble if you want up to $3,000 in free stocks. Both of these are paid promotions, of course. But take a look here. This is what's very important. This is a poll by Gallup. Now, I actually really like Gallup. I think they're uh, generally, from what my experience has been, unbiased. And I actually think their data is very good. Uh, so I think this is a high quality source. This isn't like CNN or Fox, you know, where we know there's gonna be the bias. If I wanna go to CNN, what do you think's at the top of CNN right now? CNN.com, top of CNN right now. Oh, right next to, uh, Israel unintentionally killed aid workers is Tesla sales plunge. Hmm. Now, why would that be? Why would CNN promote pain for Tesla? Hmm. Let's hold that in the back of our mind for just a moment. What do we have here? Americans' perceptions of electric vehicles' effect on climate change. And look at this one. Americans' ownership of electric vehicles by demographic group. You ready for this? Republican would not buy an electric vehicle, 71%. 71% of Republicans would not buy an electric vehicle. Whereas 54% of Democrats would consider, 22% are seriously considering, and 6% currently own, whereas just 1% of Republicans currently own, 1% are seriously considering an electric vehicle, and 26% might consider. Twice as many Democrats might consider an electric vehicle as Democrat, uh, as Republicans, and would not consider, you've got about, what is that, about five times? About five times as many Republicans would not consider an electric vehicle compared to a Democrat. Now, this is a really big deal. This is a very, very big deal. And, and you also notice that the older demographics would not consider an electric vehicle, somewhere around 53% versus 25% for the 18 to 34 range. Uh, so you're very clearly seeing uh, electric vehicle adoption is um, younger and more liberal, okay? Now, why could that potentially be a problem? Why might it be a problem that electric vehicle adoption is more liberal? Well, it would only be a problem if you potentially were uh, a liberal who is a pro, you know, climate change and, and preserving the environment, and uh, you want to see those priorities furthered along. You want to see more liberal policies. Maybe those are important to your business, to your family, to your livelihood. There's nothing wrong with being a liberal. Now, I know 50% of the world's going to say, yeah, there is, <laughs> okay, because that's because you're on the right. That's okay. It's, you, you can make up your own mind. But the point is, let's, let's think for a moment. If, if you were a Democrat, and your business or your livelihood was convinced that being a Democrat is the right thing, what would you think if the CEO of Tesla said, I think we need a red wave or America is toast? In other words, I think unless we vote Republican, America is going to crap. America will die unless we vote Republican. Will there be at least one Democratic Tesla buyer who says, I cannot support Elon Musk because of that? Well, of course, we could almost say it is a mathematical certainty that on the margin, someone will not buy a Tesla because of this kind of politicization by Elon Musk. Now, some people like to say, but Kevin, this is just Elon Musk going off on Twitter. Nobody reads all of Elon Musk's tweets. You're right. And that's actually the problem. See, part of the problem is that people don't read all of Elon's tweets. Instead, they read the tweets that the mainstream media promotes. Ah, well, what does the mainstream media promote? Well, the most 
viral, like MSN. Elon Musk breaks with Democrats. Elon Musk thinks we need a red wave or America is toast. Newsmax, MSN, MSN, Breitbart, Blaze Media, The Hill, whatever, Yahoo. It goes on, it goes on, it goes on. Elon's most one-sided tweets actually become more amplified because of their presence in the mainstream media, which then makes people ironically think that Elon is even more extreme than he actually is on Twitter. Like, I don't actually think Elon's that extreme on Twitter, or X, as we should call it. But the point is, if people can cherry pick out that. I voted 100% Dem until a few years ago. Now I think we need a red wave or America's toast. And that gets amplified, which then contributes to the front page of CNN saying Tesla sales plunge far more than expected. And we combine this with the fact that Elon is essentially, look, we could be free speech absolutists here, okay? But we two things can be true. We could promote free speech, but we could also say that if free speech hurts Tesla, it hurts Tesla's share price, right? Both of those things can be true. You could be a free speech absolutist while saying a CEO that is partisan hurts Tesla sales. Both of those things can be true. But the unfortunate reality is Elon is catering to 71% of Republicans who would never consider buying an electric vehicle anyway. That is a sad reality. If Elon purely cared about Tesla, which we know we did, I'm not saying he has to, okay? He has the right to have his opinions and his free speech, whatever. But if he solely cared about Tesla, he would be, as they say, a quote, flaming liberal and uh, pushing for every single environmental policy you can. And you know what? He'd probably be Joe Biden's puppet. Joe Biden would be like, please take more of my money because you are promoting the liberal agenda, <laughs> right? I'm not saying Elon should do that. I'm just saying. If that's solely what you cared about, that's what you would do. But now we have to engage in the reality that uh, Elon doesn't solely care about Tesla. We know that. In fact, if you scroll through his X feed, the vast majority is actually not Tesla. It's very rare that Elon actually engages with Tesla commentary. And generally, it's only on full self-driving because I personally believe that Elon is facing entrepreneurial depression. Entrepreneurial depression, just like really many kinds of depression, is when... You feel like things are outside of your control and you get anxiety because you want something to be good, but it's out of your control. So you blame the Red Sea, you blame the Houthis, you blame environmental terrorists, you blame, uh, you know, China and competition, you blame interest rates. You point the finger, but every time you point the finger, three fingers point back at you. Unfortunately, it's depressing. And so what do you do? Do you engage more in depressing, de depressing aspects? No. As an entrepreneur, you focus on what's fun and exciting. Ah, SpaceX. Oh, promoting engagement on X.com. Let's make X better. Let's make SpaceX better. Let's make, let's do all of the other things. Let's talk about Disney's diversity, uh, uh, you know, uh, programs. Let's talk about how nonprofits are rigged. These are all things from the latest things we hear from Elon. Let's talk about the border crisis. Everybody should have the same mindset on the border crisis. And the, iron the irony here is everybody agrees that the border is a disaster. Democrats and Republicans. Republicans agree the border is a disaster. Oh, great, we have consensus. Well, no, we don't because Democrats and Republicans have different opinions of how to solve it. <laughs> uh, so it, it, we, we don't need to get political in this, okay? Uh, I understand people who watch me are Republican and people who watch me are Democrat. That's my point. I try to be in the middle. But the reality is Elon is probably recoiling from Tesla and spending even less time at Tesla because he doesn't realize that he himself is part of the problem. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to say that Elon isn't wonderful because he's uh, given Tesla investors so much. The Tesla, the stock has performed so well. He's done so great for the company. You know, he, he made electric vehicles mainstream. The problem is now we are at a do or die moment. And the fear of the do or die gets priced in now. One of the reasons Tesla stock is not actually down more today, like 7 or 10% on earnings that really didn't tell us anything, we've seen that before, is because we already pre-priced in a lot of, yeah, there's probably going to be a bad delivery number here. 
Now, they were way worse than we thought, but we're only down 5.4% on that. It's actually not that bad. Actually not that bad. The problem now is what happens going forward? Well, what happens going forward is the potential for fear, the potential for a lack of guidance on April 23rd when we get our next earnings call and we get even less visibility or we get even more pain or we get even more finger pointing. See, now what I want you to think of is Tesla has been advertising for the entire quarter and Tesla deliveries still came in this bad. So imagine if we didn't have advertising. Would the numbers have been 350,000 instead of a, you know, a, a 8 to 11% year over year decline? We're actually trending towards a 15% decline without advertising. Maybe advertising has actually been a catalyst or, or I should say a ballast for making this not as bad. It's still very bad. Now, so the question then is, is this the bottom? Well, we won't actually know what's the bottom until we actually get back to growth. Maybe we'll get that guidance on April 23rd. But given the lack of guidance in the last earnings call, I can't make a bet that we're going to get that guidance. And so what happens? Well, Wall Street starts pricing in that maybe the EV fad is over. Now, of course, people are going to argue, oh, but Kevin, eventually FSD uh, you know, will be what people want to drive. And people won't want to drive a car without FSD. This is true. But we are not at that eventually yet. We're still at slow off stop signs. We're still at slow on right, uh, right turns. We're still at weird behavior in bike lanes. That's a bad place to have weird behavior, okay? We're still at clipping curbs with our tires. We're still at doing stupid things. So of course, it's supervised FSD. We know that. But the point is, are people going to pay $12,000 for that? Oh, no, of course not. Mostly because even if people were willing to pay $12,000, are they really now going to pay $12,000 for a new car? Or are you going to go look at the used inventory? See, that's the other thing that you have to consider is if you were to buy a Tesla right now and you really wanted full self-driving, my recommendation to you would actually be to buy a used car. So I would go into shop available on tesla.com and just you know, do it live. Uh, and I would look for a used vehicle that already has FSD included. So I want to find that. So let's find, we've got, uh, here it is. <coughs> Full self-driving capability, okay? So here's a Model Y, 57,000 miles. You know, that's, that, it's, it's a little up there. It's not horrible, uh, but it has full self-driving. And so what you could see here is with 57,000 miles, you're selling for $31,800. Here's one with 46,000 miles selling for 328. Uh, this one actually has better wheels, selling for $1,000 more, doesn't have FSD. Better wheels, lower mileage, 1000 bucks more, no FSD, it just has autopilot. Okay, wait a minute. So this is the standard range, this is the long range. Okay, so that's a difference. That would explain why this is a little bit more expensive, right? But the point is, even if these were the model match, we're not getting a lot of value here on FSD. Let's try to find another one. I wanna to try to find a, one that's similar to this. Let's just cop this out. Let's go standard range. So we're gonna go uh, model year. Let's go with the 21 model year. Let's try to make these as similar as we can. Let's go with the five seed version. And then we're gonna do autopilot and the FSD version. And then let's go with the 19 inch wheels. And then we're gonna go standard range. And so we're gonna go with, that's probably our rear wheel drive. And we're gonna go white. Dang, there's a lot of inventory. Okay, well, I have five. So what do we have? We have full self-driving. That one has full self-driving. All of the others are autopilot, okay? So all of these five listings are, I believe, within 200 miles of 93004. So I've got five listings within 200 miles of me uh, to choose from. I have, all of them are rear wheel drive. All of them are 2021 models. All of them are white. All of them have five seat models. All of them have the 19 inch wheels. They're exactly the same vehicle. The only thing that is different is this one right here has full self-driving capability. Now it does have 57,000 miles. So that is another difference we're gonna get. It does have more mileage. I'll give it that. The next closest one is 38,000. And it's actually selling for less. So we have to kind of do a little bit of an adjustment here, right? But the point is, is there a $12,000 difference? 
Well, let's say the difference between 20,000 extra miles is worth $3,000. You know what? Let's be generous. Let's say it's $5,000. So if we're going to adjust this down, we go 31.8, 31.8 minus $5,000, right? It should be a $26,800 car. $26,800 car. Well, now we're mileage adjusted. For 20,000 miles, miles, I gave a $5,000 discount, all right? So now we're at 30,500 uh, minus the, what do we say? That was the 268. So 268, 3,500 minus 268, $3,700. So that means without, that means FSD is selling for about a $3,700 premium mileage adjusted on exactly the same vehicle. So the market is pricing in the value of FSD at $3,700. Elon Musk is selling FSD for $12,000. That puts us at a difference of $8,300. You are overpaying by full self-driving by $8,300. $8,300 right now is an overpayment of 69% <laughs> overpriced is what FSD is right now. That sucks, right? And again, 71% Republicans will not consider an electric vehicle. So we have to put this data together and go, well, if FSD realistically needs to be priced at $4,000, which I've argued for for a very long time, that's about what the market going rate is, then people don't lose money by buying FSD. Right now, if you buy FSD, you are losing money. You're literally taking 12 and turning it into four. That sucks. 69% reduction. Um, it's very difficult for Wall Street to say, yes, we need to price in FSD. Now, don't get me wrong. Will Tesla be a competitor in robotics? Sure. But what are we selling any now? No. Are we selling Tesla semi trucks? Barely. How many cyber trucks are we selling? We don't know. The lack of clarity creates fear. The fear will put Tesla on the front page of the mainstream news. And unfortunately, you are going to get write downs after write downs after write downs. Go to the front page of the Wall Street Journal. What do you got? Tesla deliveries fall for the first time since the COVID lockdowns. So what do we do going forward? When is it time to buy the dip? Well, what we need to do going forward is, in my opinion, I want to be very clear about this. We need clear guidance from Tesla. We need a very clear outline that says, look, here's our long-term forecast. Yes, we think we're going to go through a bump in Q1 and Q2. But then as interest rates start trending down, we think we're going to see sales go do ba 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 we think based on our sales conversions for the Cybertruck, we're going to see sales do this. Bup, 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 bup. We're no longer at a 50% growth rate for the next five years, but you know what? We're at 25%. Just give us a number. That might put us at a 2.4 peg or whatever right now for Tesla stock, which would be a lot better to have that clarity than the lack of clarity we have right now, which is, oh my gosh, if Tesla's shrinking year over year and we're going through an earnings recession, or we potentially actually in a situation where, oh no, Tesla's peg is way higher than we really think it is. So this hurts from a valuation point of view. The fear of the unknown unfortunately hurts Tesla's valuation more than if Tesla would just come out with a very clear roadmap. Here's what we think. Here are our projections. Here are our targets. This is what we're going towards. A, guidance. B, full self-driving price decline. C, either Elon, stop tweeting political nonsense, although it's too late, the cat's out of the bag, or... Make this very simple. Elon can still be an innovator. He can still be part of Tesla. He can still have his stock comp plan, everything. Put a, put a CEO in charge who leads the company that is not political. I'm not here saying, oh, Elon shouldn't be involved or whatever. You can absolutely still be involved. Shouldn't be the face of Tesla. You've got to separate that. And I don't know that you could really ever accomplish that. I don't know that you could separate Elon from the face of Tesla. That's very difficult. I think the easiest way to do it, quite frankly, is with a spokesperson like Ryan Reynolds. Just like the ad that we made, I think you need, uh, you know, the, the joke ad that we made, which, which is removed now. But what you need is a, a, a high quality, ideally neutral person that everybody recognizes who is a spokesperson for Tesla and raves about how great the Tesla is in advertising. Tesla's ads right now aren't doing that. Tesla's ads right now are promoting price. They're not promoting 
the emotion of a, of, of a spokesperson. I think that's what they're missing. I think they're cheaping out by not picking somebody like this. It could be anyone. Heck, have Taylor Swift promote the frickin' car. Everybody loves Taylor Swift. Imagine that. Taylor Swift. Here's why I love my Tesla. And it's Taylor Swift talking about how safe it is, how when she has kids at some day in the you know, at some point in the future, or she wants to protect her cats or whatever. I know I want the safest vehicle on the road to protect my kittens, right? And, and Taylor Swift looks over at, at you know the beautiful big eyed cats or whatever. That sells. Where's the marketing? So the style of ads and marketing leaves something to be desired. It's unfortunate and I feel depressed, but the reality is uh, we saw this coming. So now the question is, where's the bottom? Well, that depends. Sure, people are going to see this as a buy the dip opportunity. The reality is we just got a valuation squeeze. And unfortunately that squeeze is going to keep getting squoze until things turn around. And I don't know that we can really bet on interest rate cuts helping Tesla, even if we get one or two or even three rate cuts this year, does it make a big difference? No. Now the trajectory might make a difference, right? Which is good. But I'm actually concerned that we're way overpricing the odds of getting a rate cut in June. You know, markets are at like 58.2% right now, odds for a June cut. I don't think we're getting one until September or maybe even later, maybe even after the election. It's just my opinion. So I don't know. It's challenging. I do think in the long term, Optimus, Tesla, EVs, it's the future, but we have a lot of problems to get through between now and then. And there's a good chance there will be even better opportunities. But, so with that said, if you want my buy sell alerts for when I buy back into Tesla, make sure to be part of the Stocks and Psychology of Money group, link down below. Coupon expires this Friday. I don't to advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.